Now joining us live is Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians, Linda Burney. Linda Burney, thank you for your time. Today's the beginning of Reconciliation Week. Can you tell us about why it's so important to mark this uh, week this year? Well, yesterday was, of course, National Sorry Day. Uh, and today marks the beginning of National Reconciliation Week. And National Reconciliation is bookended by two really significant dates for us in Australia. The 27th of May being the 53rd anniversary of the 1967 referendum and the 3rd of June being the, I think it's the 22nd anniversary of the High Court decision on Mabo overturning the legal fiction of Terra Nullius and establishing native title in Australia. And of course tomorrow is the, and the 20th anniversary of that remarkable day in our history of uh, the Bridge Walks for Reconciliation. This is a time when we've seen in the last Closing the Gap report that we're missing a lot of our key targets for Indigenous Australians, including in things like life expectancy. What work do, needs to be done to bring them up to the standard of living that every Australian should have? I've had this question put to me a couple of times and I think there has been enormous strides in, um, in the process of reconciliation. So the point that you've just made in Elise is a crucially important one, is that there are still some very significant outstanding issues, including the social justice issues, like life expectancy, like the number of people who are uh, being locked up in jail, many more than when we had the Royal Commission in the late 80s and early 90s. And of course, the number of Aboriginal children that are still being removed and put into care. Uh, these are some of the fundamental issues that are still critical to achieving true reconciliation in Australia. There were concerns going into the coronavirus shutdowns that this would disproportionately affect a lot of Indigenous communities, in particular remote ones. Have you seen any evidence that that is the case, that they are suffering with being cut off at this time? And is there anything we should be doing to support them better? Uh, one of the great stories out of uh, what are some very difficult parts of the coronavirus story is that there hasn't been any infections uh, that we're aware of at this stage in remote communities. Uh, but there are an, our enormous fears and of course those communities have been self-isolating for a long time. Uh, both the Western Australian and the Northern Territory Government took very early action and the Queensland Government in terms of closing down those communities. Because of the dreadful housing conditions, there was an impossibility of social distancing and of course uh, there have been issues about food security and issues about getting clo uh, warm clothes into those communities with the winter coming on. But at this stage there have been no infections in those communities and that is a tribute to the communities, uh, to the state and territory governments and to the community-based organisations that have worked so well with the Commonwealth Government and with Labor in terms of protecting those communities. If I could ask you about, uh, there was a blast at the Yukon Gorge for a Rio Tinto mine site. This has been going since 2013, but archaeologists did find the different bits of uh, Aboriginal history dating back 46,000 years. Are you disappointed this blast went ahead? I think it's reprehensible that the blast went ahead. Um, we're not talking about just any old uh, site. And it just strikes me that, you know, we're talking about reconciliation, that people need to understand that these are sacred, significant sites. And the destroying of those sites affects people living today. They're not historical sites. They are living, breathing, important sites. Rio Tinto, I know, has had a long, long relationship with the local community, with the traditional owners. Um, and they knew that those sites were there and took the decision that the ore was more important uh, than what our 
incredibly important sites, not just for the Aboriginal community, but for the whole Australian community. It is my understanding, though, that Rio Tinto did actually fund the archaeological digs that found those artefacts dating back so long and that they had done a number saying that there weren't any relics there now to be discovered. Do you think that's good enough? I don't think it's good enough. I understand that the approval was given by the previous Liberal government in Western Australia. I also understand the present Labor government has legislation ready to go uh, that pr would prevent such an incident happening again. Well, my strong urging is that that legislation needs to be enacted. But at the end of the day, uh, we have lost another significant piece of the Australian story, and that's what needs to be understood, a very significant, sacred piece of the Australian story. And just finally, you have been the Labor spokesperson on family violence. We've just heard from the eSafety Commissioner that there's been a 200% increase in image-based abuse, sharing intimate photos and videos without partners' consent during the coronavirus lockdown. Do you think this is a cause for concern and should we be doing more to tackle this issue? The eSafety Commissioner's report um, and statement this morning was alarming. And as you said, Annalise, a 200% um, percent increase in image-based abuse. Uh, one of the fears uh, that has been shared by both uh, the Labor Party and the government has been uh, that with this lockdown, it's very hard to know what's going on behind closed doors. The services right across this country have said that there's been less uh, reporting, uh, but that suggests that, you know, the... the capacity to report through phones is, is negligible because uh, you're in close proximity to often your abuser. Uh, Labor's position has been very consistent all along. Um, it is crucial to uh, understand that if a domestic violence can be dealt with now, if people who are reporting and getting out are able to be housed, then why is it any different after the virus finishes. This is a problem that can be solved and this has been demonstrated, I think, by this virus. The other thing to point out very um, importantly is that this was a crisis before the virus. It's not the virus that has created the crisis. It was a crisis well beforehand. Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians, Linda Burney, thank you for your time. Thanks, Annalise.